Hello and welcome to another episode where we attempt to fall asleep but we succeed because we have the help of Habibi Spice aka me. Tonight we are going to be diving into the ocean. I'm joking. Tonight we are going to be diving into the swimming pool. I'm also joking. Tonight we are not doing diving in the physical sense, but we are doing diving in the metaphorical sense. That we are going to go head in to a subject that is self-help, which is self-explanatory and it means helping yourself. I have a book here called The Urban Monk by Pedram Shojai, creator of well.org. I don't know what well.org mean, but it say here, Eastern wisdom and modern hacks to stop time and find success, happiness and peace. Don't you wish you could stop time? Sometime. Don't you wish you could take a seat and let time take a seat as well? Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? You like this pop culture reference? Of course you do. Now, come here, Larry. Hey buddy, chapter one is called stress. How do I dodge the bullets? Now, realistically, you cannot dodge a bullet because a bullet travel at thousand miles per second. Bless you. By the way, I scheduled surgery for Larry because he need to have some teeth removed. If you want to help him pay for the surgery, you can become a member of this channel for five dollar a month. Five dollar. You spend more on coffee in the morning, not your evening coffee even. So become a member, support Larry, otherwise you are a sociopath. How do we dodge stress? Well, for me, I usually stop giving a fuck. But this might be hard for you. If you want to dodge your own bullet that is coming from within, maybe you should focus on not pulling the trigger first. But sometimes the trigger is automatic. So let's go ahead and see what Urban Monk has to say about Have you ever felt guilty about missing a workout at the gym? Ever felt guilty for missing yoga class? Did you learn meditation at one point and then stop doing it? Do you regret not spending enough quality time with your kids, spouse, friends or aging parents? Do you have a stack of books by your nightstand that you look at each night wondering when you'll get them? When you'll get to them? Have you ever come back from vacation feeling drained and less ready to take on your life than when you started? Are you stressed, tired, or just downright bored of the ruts that you're in? Welcome to the modern world. Things were not always like this. Our ancestors had more time in life, they had more space, they walked to places and took in fresh air, they spent time preparing meals and enjoying them with loved ones, and they got more exposure to nature and the elements. Life was less stressful, less full. We were surrounded by family and belonged to an extended tribe. Today we've got bills. We've got millions of bits of information 
bombarding us every minute. The news about militants trying to kill us is often served with reports about rising cancer rates and crashing economies. Our kids are being tugged on by commercial interests and our ice caps are melting. La Habibi, not the ice caps. Everything costs more money than we'd like. Yeah. And we find ourselves running around like crazy people, trying to keep the whole shit show going. All for what? The crisis of modern urban or suburban person is what we've got. But are you okay, lady? What's itching you? The crisis of the modern urban or suburban person is that we've got bullets flying at us and we are ill-equipped to deal with any of it. So this is part of the introduction. Enter the urban monk. This is next page. This book is filled with priceless practices that you can use in your daily life. Right here and now. To find peace and have more energy. Instead of getting pissed at the lady in front of you at the grocery store for fumbling around with her clipped coupons, you could thank her because she's just giving you the valuable gift of time. You now have five minutes to practice your breathing and tap back into the infinite source of energy and peace that is your birthright. I was pre-med at UCLA and then I found Tai Chi. From there, I found a Taoist abbot who taught me Kung Fu and Qigong. I became a Taoist monk and traveled the world, sitting with many masters. I have been a student of esoteric Pause. Sitting with many masters and have been a student of esoteric practices ever since. But I was raised in Los Angeles. I had normal friends and went to normal schools. I've partied with rock stars and sat in Amazonian huts with the best of them. I became doctor of oriental medicine and saw thousands of patients. This helped me understand the human suffering, not in an abstract new age way, but in actual reality. I've helped normal people get through real life crises for years. Divorces happen, people die, kids get into trouble with drugs, couples have trouble getting pregnant. This is the life down here in the cities, and this is where we need help. Let's forget the lofty spiritual stuff for a minute and get down to earth. Once we've gotten our shit together here at home, then yes, there's an amazing realm of mysticism to explore. But let's start where we stand, where we suffer. If you hear some yelling outside, there are some kids at the pool. Instead of getting angry at them, they are just children. They are offering, offering me the gift of very good hearing, because I can hear them. But even somebody with bad hearing can hear them, let's be honest. Anyway, I'm going to skip to chapter one. Stress. How do I dodge the bullets? Robert is from the school of old. He was brought up in an era where there were three choices in life for young men. Be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. He studied law knowing it would be a stable job with good security. Long hard hours of study, bar exam, 70,000 work week, 70 hour work week, lots of coffee and dealing with difficult people were all humps on his road to success. He fought and worked his way up to the, up the ladder and is now a junior partner in a pretty good firm. 
The days are still long and the stress is ridiculous. He's definitely got less hair. His wife stopped working after their second was child was born, so he now shoulders the entire financial burden for his family. He lives in a pretty nice house in a good neighborhood. They have pool and a jacuzzi. He hasn't been in last year. They own a timeshare condo that they stress about getting to. Timeshares are a scam. Does that make sense? Health insurance prices go up each year. And his youngest kid has asthma and some crazy food allergies. All of which cost money and time and create more challenges around the house. Even with a part-time nanny, there seems to be no sleep to be had. And their last vacation to Maui was more trouble than it was worse. He came back exhausted. Robert's life is filled with stress. Although he has a roof over his head, cars, and plenty of food, deep down he's terrified. He knows he can't keep up at this pace. He feels like he's going to fall on his face one day, but he can't. After all, they all depend on him. He drinks coffee, goes to the gym, takes some multivitamin, and gets occasional massage. But all the while his mind is filled with the pressures of keeping it all going. A good lawyer needs to drive Lexus. Good parents send their kids to private school. Gymnastics and piano lessons are must. The other parents are shipping their kids off to some fancy summer camp, of course. The joy is gone. The stress has tipped the scale and he's constantly trying to keep his chin up. His dad taught him that real men never give up. They fight the good fight for their family and never show any weakness. He watches the morning news while eating his cereal with the kids. He feels like an absentee dad who didn't really see them grow up. And he mourns this fact. Robert feels a weakness is gaining momentum and he is terrified he's going to lose the battle. After all, with all the stuff he's constantly throwing money at, they barely have any savings. And if he stopped working, they'd be in real trouble within a few months. His life insurance would pay out a decent amount if he kneeled, if he killed over. And a couple of times already, he thought about it and the scared the hell out of him. This man is considering ending his life just so life insurance could pay his family. Robert is stuck. His adrenals are running on empty and there is no end in sight. He can't see the way out. And each day, a silence desperation builds in the shadows of his psyche. A plight for the very survival of his family. Robert keeps fighting, but his doctor has warned that his blood pressure is getting too high. The stakes are high, and so are his numbers. What's a man to do? So this man is living the dream, like they say in the United States. I used to work at a pizza place. There was this white man who would walk in. He would get the same pizza, just large cheese. I would ask him, how are you? Before I could finish the question, he would say, living the dream. Living the dream. He wouldn't even talk more about it. That's all he would say. He would pay the price of his pizza and he would leave. I knew this man had kids. And I knew for a fact he was not living the dream. And I saw a TikTok one time. I'm not sure what I saw. It was a video or even an online meme. And it say, whenever somebody says living the dream, it means they are suffering. I wonder where this man is right now. The problem. In a way, we all share Robert's problem. Our bodies developed and evolved over millions of years 
in response to some predictable stressors in our environment. Fight or flight is a beautiful system that help us stay alive in dangerous world filled with predators and scarcity. It evolved to help us get out of life-threatening situations by optimizing our metabolism to ramp up into crisis mode. When we're in danger, our cortisol and our adrenaline level surge to help divert the blood flow, blood flow to the big muscle that will help us fight an opponent or flee from a predator. These are stress hormones that have top-down control over several systems in our bodies. And slight fluctuations in their levels move dials all over the place. They work in conjunction with an elegant switching mechanism in our nervous system. Robert's stress is not from an acute incident. Sure, occasionally the car in the next lane swerves over and gets his heart rate and the middle finger up. But that's not what's killing him. It's the chronic stress. A wild impala in Africa doesn't think about the what if scenarios of a lion charging. He hits, cruises around, has plenty of sex, like me, and if a threat shows up, he runs for it. If he survives, he shakes it out and goes back to his business. Not us. We keep replaying the event in our mind, bind it to emotion, and visualize it running in different ways. We don't drop it. That's the problem, we're always thinking. You're laying in bed, you're thinking of the different scenarios that happen and how they could have happened differently. Habiba, stop. These events happened, and they happened once, and they happened the way that they happened. The Impala has moved on, but we're in therapy still talking about it, or worse, still bottling it up. We don't really get into rest and digest mode enough to balance this, the system out, so we stay wound up. Chronic stress is a killer. Robert has many life or death moments every time a client threatens to cancel or a judge throws out a case. His wife came home with a fancy purse the other day and it turned his stomach. How much did that cost? These modern stressors are basically deaths by the thousand cuts. Our abstract concept of money or currency is tied to our very survival and triggers the same circuitry. It messes with us and stresses us out. Money is tight, deep down that means something that our bodies understand viscerally. Low level of cortisol release over a sustained period of time have terrible consequences for the body. You can say that Robert lives in sympathetic overdrive and has forgotten how to switch back over and chill out. With the body constantly cutting blood flow to vital systems, here's some of the predictable fallout. So he says restricting energy to the immune system, cutting energy to the digef digestive system, causing blood sugar roller coaster. Cortisol is like a credit card. The body needs energy immediately, so cortisol is like swiping a card to get instant gratification. It helps the body to draw energy from our glycogen reserves in the liver for our immediate needs, but that has some serious consequences. As blood sugar initially surges, the pancreas senses this and releases insulin to grab the sugar and shuttle it into, into the next cell. This is all good except when things start to fall off the tracks. After years of being on this cortisol energy roller coaster, the insulin spike often overshoots the sugar, when then, which then triggers us to get hungry and crave more sugar or carb in order to balance it out. This can manifest in moodiness, irritability, headaches, and general fatigue. 
Most people have so many ups and downs with this that they feel like they're spent by midday Tuesday and are already dreaming of the weekend. So what can we do? What can we do to fix this? Here we go. The master remains calm. The world is nuts. Our lives drive us towards panic, frenzy. If we don't hold the line, then we're lost. It's important to live in the eye of the hurricane, where things are calm and chaos isn't the law of the land. Much of the wisdom of the ancient monasteries has been held in for millennia in centers of excellence. Temples, schools, caves, and academies that are not subjected to the fickle meanderings, meanderings of the outside world. Our job is to bring that peace back into our cities and set the tone for a balanced life here and now. In the West, we've fallen for the false assumption that meditation is something we need to do once we are already stressed out. That's like saying you need to stretch after you've pulled a muscle. Try to use meditation as an operating system instead. So just like you install Windows 10 or Windows 11, or if you are old, Windows 98, just like you install those over on your computer so your computer can run, you have to install meditation into your system as a way to fuel it, as a way to make it run. This means you constantly scan your consciousness and cue for calm. You can sense thoughts that make you reactive and uneasy. And you learn to let them pass. You don't let them knock you off your perch. The mind is reactive. Learning to remain non-reactive is the name of the game. Does this mean living without passion? Absolutely love not. Live, love, love, and learn. Just don't be a sucker for drama. Stop watching reality TV also. Live your life with enthusiasm and purpose, and don't be a pawn in someone else's vision for you. You drive, better yet, let your higher self drive, and you relax. You heard the urban monk say it. I wouldn't say better than me, but he said it. And I would say it as well. Now that you are able to remain calm amidst the storm, you don't have to be. I wouldn't say you have to be inside of the eye of the hurricane to remain calm. But your skill is being inside of the hurricane and maintaining calm. It's easy to be calm in the eye because it is calm in the eye. But now when you are in the hurricane, how will we calm down? So install your meditative operating system outside of the hurricane. So that when you are inside, you can just run it and boot it up. I hope you are able to meditate yourself to sleep. And I hope you will stop stressing about your life insurance or your health insurance. These companies are not made to help you. They are made to make you stress. And Habibi Spice is here to make you unstress. Good night from me and Larry. And I hope you fall asleep nice and fast.